Hi, everyone. Welcome to our next session. This time around, I am joined by Addie and Jessica, who are going to be talking about Azure AI Foundry and how you can use it to do some cool content creation. So you're up. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jessica. I am a PM on I on the Azure AI model ecosystem team working with awesome model providers for Gen AI applications like Stability AI to be able to empower you guys to develop really awesome, really cool Gen AI apps. And Addy here is a enterprise solutions engineer who works really closely with a lot of disability AI tech and is going to share with us some of the cool stuff that their models do. Thank you, Jessica. Hey everyone, my name's Addy and I represent a company that is really innovative and at the cutting edge of generating imagery with AI. And so I'll give you a little bit of history on our company, what we're doing at the moment, and then get into Azure AI Foundry and how you can use it. So Stable Diffusion is probably the most well-known image generation model in the world. Something like 80% of all images generated have been done with SDXL, which is one of our original models uh, way back in 2022. Recently, we've entered a new chapter in our company where we have an entirely new leadership team led by Prem Akraju, who is our CEO. He comes from Weta. You may recognize Sean Parker from Naster. He is on our board. And of course, you'll recognize James Cameron, who is also on our board. And we are backed by very top venture capitalists. Some of our big partners include WPP, the big agency, Lenovo, HubSpot, and Wix. We're already generating enterprise solutions at scale. Some, you know, in the magnitude of thousands to millions of images are generated with our model already. So within the Azure AI Foundry, we have our image model built in. There's three flavors of them at the moment. So from accessing the very core models all the way up to a workflow that is already supported. We're looking to add more features and this is something we'll be working with Azure on. So the three models that are supported now are Stable Image Ultra, SD 3.5 and Stable Image Core. The differences between them is Stable Image Core is really meant for efficiency, speed, and it's lightweight. So if you have to generate tens of thousands of images every minute, something like that, you use that. SD 3.5 is our most premier model at the moment, which gives you the most photorealistic results, highest quality, prompt adherence, text adherence, and of course, safety. And then finally, we have Stable Image Ultra, which is built on top of SD 3.5, which adds to workflows. So you can edit your images in paint and out paint and so on. So these are the three that are on Azure AI Foundry at the moment. We're seeing a lot of growth and a lot of use case within Stable Diffusion. So some of our big customers come from the world of e-commerce, marketing and advertising, creativity and design around ideation, and then of course, ad platforms, which are already operating at scale. And then finally, from my past experience, the world I come from, visual effects and post-production. So these are sorts our big industry verticals. Here's a quick example of how Stable Diffusion is used on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you go to any e-commerce marketplace, you'll see the product in a void, in a white background, which is the image on the left. And that's your input. What we do on the fly is create a character, a background, and more context around that product at scale. So this could be tens of thousands of images every minute or every hour. And this creates a, a much bigger level of engagement with consumers. So this is just a really good example of how Stable Diffusion is solving real world business efficiencies. Okay, with that said, I'm gonna quickly transition over to a video of how this is available on Azure AI Foundry today. So I'm just gonna play this back for y'all. All right, today we're going to take a look at how you can use Stability AI's models in Azure AI Foundry. Once you have launched your AI Foundry and are in your resource group, 
You can come to the model catalog and filter by collections to find stability AI models. And you will get these seven models that have been deployed so far. We have three different text to image models. The image core is based on top of SDXL. 3.5 large is our most recent foundation model and image ultra builds on top of the 3.5. Under the playground section, you will find images playgrounds, and you can choose between image ultra or 3.5 large. Uh, for the sake of timekeeping, I'm going to copy over some prompts, and we're going to start with very basic prompts, a female model with pumpkin colored sweater standing perfectly centered in the shot. She's standing in front of a mountain in a false setting. And the prompt, if you noticed, is very natural language. It doesn't need you to know any kind of dark arts of prompt engineering. Anything that you can imagine or as you would talk uh, with about with your peers or friends is how you would describe the image to the model and the model will generate the images. We are also able to generate nine different kinds of aspect ratios. So you can choose what aspect ratio you want. And here we have our image generated very quickly in about nine-ish seconds. And the image is very crisp and highly detailed. And all that required was about one and a half line of prompting. For the next one, I'm going to check the diversity of the model by providing a prompt that says a high fashion portrait of an African woman in vintage 70s glam. And then I use various different adjectives to describe the, the person and set it in a sunset sunset desert backdrop right so the model is generating this image and um, we can once it is done see how uh, the model handles diversity after it is done we can also try generating a new aspect ratio so here we have one image that is generated um, and all of these images are generated in a probabilistic manner which means that each image will be different from the previous one but we can control that by defining a seed value and if you set it to zero, it's set to random. Uh, so for the next one, let's actually repaste the same prompt, but this time I'm going to choose a different aspect ratio to see what it does. And just to highlight again, the image ultra and 3.5 large generate highly realistic detailed images with very basic natural language prompts that you would use as you are describing everyday things. This is a new aspect ratio that we have generated of this uh, female in this apparel right here so for the next one i'm actually going to do uh a, i'm just going to type out the prompt and we're going to look at how you can put text in images we're going to say a wide shot of a let's say a billboard um on a busy um highway the billboard reads stability for everyone and by double or by wrapping this the words that i want in the image in double quotation i can generate images that have text in them and all that requires is very basic prompting some detail and you are good to go so once the image is ready we can see it has generated stability for everyone for us uh, as a reference example and you can always generate the image again in different aspect ratios with new seed numbers. So let's imagine a use case where I am a product designer and I'm trying to design a new pair of headphones and I want to make them culturally specific. So I'm designing new modern headphones. This is a prompt I copied over, um, resting on a wooden table, and I want to make it specific to the Indian market. So I'm adding Diwali decorations. I'm going to generate this image. So instead of having to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a product photography shoot, I can just generate the images with uh, this model with very basic prompts. So here we go. A Diwali inspired uh, photo shoot of a product, which in this case is a pair of headphones. Now, what if I wanted to take all of that and then wrap it up in, uh, wrap it up, wrap up some uh, text in the images? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this here and maybe this time instead of saying mid shot, I can say a wide shot. Um, and then at the end, I have added Happy Diwali to generate the image. And I switch it to wide shot because over here you can see it's very tightly shot. So maybe we don't have enough of a canvas to quite prominently display Happy Diwali. 
So let's give it a minute. And here we have an image of our product. And this time with the words, Happy Diwali. And that's all it took is basically deploying uh, 3.5 large or ultra into your resource group and then just using the image playground to generate these images. Excellent. So that is actually invoking our API, which is hosted on Azure here and all, right, all of the right, API. We're going to take a look. All of the API documentation is under the consumption section there. So that is all for my demo. And if you want to get in touch with us, contact Ken Hodge here. His email is on our team. And I'll open it up to any questions you may have. Yeah. Thank so you. to kick off some initial questions, let's talk about safety in image generation. Right. When you're working with generating images, right, depending on your experience with prompt engineering and generally what you're trying to generate, there may be some safety concerns. How does the stability AI models handle that? Yeah, especially at enterprise scale and working with big companies, safety is something we must deliver on. And we actually have a dedicated safety team. So we'll go ahead and list out objects that cannot be generated or famous people that cannot be generated. And of course, NSFW stuff that cannot be generated. This is all built into our model. It's not something you have to do additionally. And then on top of those safety mitigations that are within the model, we have a very established responsible AI safety system and contact checks within our Azure AI Foundry ecosystem. So not only on top of what Stability AI and their models are offering for safety checks, we also have baseline safety checks in Azure as well. So as you're generating images, you're getting top-notch flagging. Absolutely. And one of the things that I get to work on is fine-tuning. So it's taking our general model and fine tuning it for brands. So for example, if you want to generate Nike footwear, then we can take our model to not just generate generic shoes, but actual Nike shoes. This is something that's achievable now. And as those images are generated, you're able to download those from the image playground, utilize them in your workflows, use them both to ideate market and eventually get those products launched. Absolutely, yeah. The entire life cycle of product. Local AI Foundry or Azure? So the question was if this is integrated into AI Foundry Local. Um, at this time, I can't answer 100% sure yes or no, but I can say that we're looking into it. SD 3.5 is available for Comfy UI, so if you do have a local workflow outside of it, you could certainly use it that way. Yeah. yeah, so definitely encourage you guys to get creative, get in Image Playground, and begin generating some really cool stuff. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you all so much.